Welcome to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After you run you through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a doozy of an episode for you here today. Obviously, we're going to run you through all the draft picks and everything that went down and uh, what I liked, what I didn't like, all that good stuff. But before we get into that, I want to address the running back issue that everybody's having. Uh, and I wanted to talk about that because it seems to be a big topic right before we get into the draft. It's obviously draft related. You know, the Dolphins missed out on Michael Carter, uh, Javante Williams, Travis Etienne, Najee Harris, obviously, and obviously Najee Harris, one of my favorite players in the draft. And obviously there was a news story on Pro Football Rumors that the Dolphins tried to trade up to get him, uh, which would have been three first round picks, which would have been pretty awesome. If I mean, that would have been probably the best first round the Dolphins have had in 12, 10 years, 13 years. Uh, maybe even longer than that. That would have been a very, very good first round uh, if they were able to pull that off. <clears throat> they obviously weren't able to, uh, and they didn't come out of the draft with a high-end running back. I just want to throw my opinion on this out there. I wasn't in love with everybody after Najee Harris, and ETN, I was. I liked him. I didn't think he was some, you know, I didn't think he was a great talent necessarily, and I know a lot of people disagree with that. But, I, you know, I wasn't super high on him. I loved Harris a lot. He was by far my favorite. Everyone else, I really didn't care that much for. It wasn't like last year with, like, Jonathan Taylor and J.K. Dobbins where you could get someone, like, who I thought was really talented later in the draft. It wasn't really like that. Uh, so, for me, it wasn't that big of a deal that we didn't come out with. Like, the fact that we didn't get Javante Williams isn't going to crush me. Or Michael Carter or Chubba Hubbard. Or some of these, I think that's his name, that sounds so weird to say his name like that, but uh, some of those guys, some of those, sorry guys, uh, that might cut out there for a second. Um, you know, I wasn't crushed about that. Uh, so I, that didn't bother me that the Dolphins didn't weren't a little bit more aggressive with that as the draft went on. When you look at the options that they have now, obviously they have, um, they drafted one in the seventh round, we'll talk about that later. They have Gaskin, who obviously was also drafted in the seventh round, uh, and Ahmed, uh, who was an undrafted free agent. Um, so that's what their running back room, and obviously Laird, uh, that's what their running back room looks like right now. In terms of veteran options, obviously Todd Gurley, um, Todd Gurley, uh, uh, and Le'Veon Bell are still available. The Dolphins are strapped for cap, obviously. Um, and, you know, that we'll see if they can make that work. Maybe they do some restructures, somehow free some cap space. Maybe they go out and get one of those two. Um, I wouldn't be super opposed to that. Uh, but again, I, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction um, to some of this stuff with the running backs. And I just wanted to talk about that for a second. It's not like the Dolphins can't do anything. Like I said, they could go get a veteran like Bell or, or Gurley, which would be awesome if they were able to do that. I, I'm more on the Bell side than the Gurley thing. I think Gurley, I don't think he's better necessarily than Gaskin uh, or Ackman right now. But one of the things those two would add is a receiving threat. Gaskin's, Gaskin is very good at that. Um, you know, he's good at it. Uh, Ackman's a little, you know, he's not the greatest receiving threat in the world. He's a good, you know, from what we've seen so far, he's trending in the right direction. But Bell and Gurley are really, really, really special at that. I don't, you know, Gurley's obviously not as special as he used to be, but I think Bell can still provide that at a pretty good level. And I think Bell would bring a much needed big running back who's good in pass pro uh, and is a th- kind of a thumper. Uh, and can wear teams down. And I think Bell can still is still capable of that. Uh, so we'll see what the Dolphins... And obviously they had interest in him last year. We'll see if they decide to go that route. Uh, one more news story before we get into the, the the draft. Obviously, if you don't... You guys already know this probably, but the, uh, the Dolphins traded Eric Flowers to the Washington football team uh, to really relieve some cap space uh, as much as they could. Um, and uh, obviously... You know, Chris Greer and Brian commented on this the the uh, the trade last night, I believe, and they really made the trade because they wanted uh, some of the young players to get more playing time, and they thought they would add some more linemen in the draft, which is what they did. Um, and I'm really really happy with what they ended up doing um, with that. So let's get into the draft. Let's get into the draft, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. So 
I guess I'll give my overall thoughts at the end. And uh, after we get run through this draft. But let's start with the first pick. Obviously, the Dolphins, who missed, obviously didn't get to draft Pitts or uh, Jamar Chase because they were obviously taken um, before. And then it came down to Devontae Williams, um, or Devon, not Devontae Williams, um, uh, Devontae Smith uh, and Jalen Waddle. And, you know, everybody knows if you've listened to the show for the last month, I'm a huge Devontae Smith fan. I like him a lot. Um, and I'm a huge Jalen Waddle fan. I just never thought, like, it, if we got Waddle at 12, I would have been out of this world. I would have been super happy about that. Um, and I'm not mad at the Dolphins for picking Waddle. Um, so I just want to get that across. I don't, th- you know, it didn't affect my happiness for it because the Dolphins still got a really good player. Uh, would have I have picked Devontae Smith over Waddle? Yes. Uh, is Waddle a bad player? Absolutely not. I think every Dolphins fan, if we stayed at 12, would have been fine with that. And I still think a lot of Dolphins fans are happy about Waddle. Waddle is a special talent. He fills a huge need. We had a, we had no slot receiver last year. It didn't exist on this roster. We had two outside presences, and even going into the to, to the season when everybody was healthy, we still didn't have a slot receiver. Lyndon Bowden isn't a natural slot receiver. Jalen Waddle is. Um, the thing that Bowden, Bowden does best is kind of those gadget plays. But he's not a. Sp- I don't think he'll ever be a- an amazing slot receiver. Jalen Waddle has that potential to be a superstar. Wes Welker, obviously, he has the athletic ability, athletic ability to be even better than that. But he can be that like superstar slot receiver. You can play him on the outside if you want to. He's great with those gadget plays. He's explosive, and I think something that people point out that is very important is he's really good in the quick passing game because his run after the catch ability is so. Uh, so amazing, and that's something that this team really needs, is someone who can get separation on a consistent basis and who can make the most out of things after the catch. The best player we had on our team that could do that was, I would say, Lynn Bowden towards the end of the year, who we didn't have at the start, and Jakeem Grant, who's the most inconsistent player on the team, probably. So this is honestly, I think, an amazing move by them. Uh, I love this pick. Um, this is something that I've been pounding the table for is to get, obviously, another weapon for Tua. Um, and he adds, and it, something that I said months for months, is literally after the season ended, after we got beat by the Bills, this is stuff that I was talking about. The Dolphins on their roster right now, they have Devontae Parker, they have Preston Williams. They, they're they too samey. Preston and Devontae are very similar players. They never had, like I said, a slot receiver. They, they only had... You know, Matt Collin, the, all of those guys are really the same. They're outside threats. They're outside receivers. You can't really move them inside. And I, like I said, Lynn Bowden really isn't a pure receiver. Jalen Waddle is out of the box a pure, natural receiver who, despite his size at 5'9", who I know a lot of people are worried about, maybe, maybe worried about his size, he plays with a lot of power. He's really, really good in the open field of making you miss with elusiveness. His explosiveness is special. Okay, he's a good route runner. His hands are the things that I think not a lot of people give him credit for, but he has amazing hands, like amazing hands. His catch against Missouri for someone his size is should be illegal. Like it reminds me of Tyree Kill. That's something that, that Tyree Kill uh, is not really necessarily known for. But Tyree Kill has had some highlight catches in his career, d- despite his size. Because he's such a great athlete, he can kind of overcome that. And same thing with Jalen Waddle. He's such a great athlete that he he mixes his great hands with his athleticism. And he was born to play receiver. Um, and I'm very, very happy with the pick. Like I said, just, not only can he do the gadget stuff, but he is a natural pure receiver. And he can affect the game in that way as well. Um, and he's a good route runner. And like I said, he helps the quick passing game. And you know something that people, I think, kind of miss... Is two is not a bad deep ball thrower, uh, in my opinion. It just the guys that we had weren't burners. Devonte Parker, Preston Williams, you know they can get the 50-50 ball, but they're not going to get a ton of separation on post routes or go balls down the sideline. Well, the Dolphins added two guys who can get separation down the field, and Will Fuller and Jalen Waddle. And Brian Flores even admitted it in his press conference where he said, you know, this is really going to help us run run the football because we have 
more speed on our team now with Waddle, with uh, uh, <clears throat> Will Fuller, who Grant couldn't do that because Grant's not a good receiver. He gets swallowed up because of his size. He can't separate in, in, in the intermediate and short stuff, and his hands are bad. So he's he's never been a pure receiver, Jakeem Grant. And, you know, we've always wanted to play the slot, but he can never do that. But now the Dolphins have two guys that can do that. It's going to help us run the football, and people are going to be amazed when this upcoming season when two is actually hitting deep touchdowns because they can get separation down the field. It's not 50-50 balls. They actually separate uh, on play action and all that kind of stuff, and that's something that the Dolphins did not have. Even if uh, Albert Wilson came back and Alan Hurts played that season, they still wouldn't have had that. And Will Fuller and Waddle are special at that. So... I think the Dolphins offseason as a whole has been better than I could have imagined, and, and, and I really do think they improved the team, um, and I think Tua is going to have a much easier time this year <clears throat> looking like the Tua that we all thought he would be. Because, and, you know, you combine with, you know, obviously he's 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 looking, to, not to make this about Tua, but it is about Tua. I mean, this is the reason why we, uh, you pick, not only, you know, you, you want to surround him with weapons, like I, for all the reasons I just said, it's going to help him. It's going to help the run game. It's going to help the offense. Um, but, you know, he's gotten bigger in the offseason. He's going to have another offseason under his belt. He has a year under his belt. And you marriage that with the improvements that the team has made on offense. And they literally addressed <laughs> the weaknesses of the offense. And this, this front offense is so smart. Um, and uh, I'm very, very happy. And cannot wait to see this team play on Sunday. This team is going to be uh, so fun to watch. Uh, I, I just, I'm very, very happy with <clears throat> this pick. And uh, one of the best first-round picks this team, we, we just did it, I just did an entire podcast of every first-round pick the Dolphins made in the last 10 years. And Jalen Waddell, if we were to rank them coming out of college, if we were to rank Jalen Waddell against every one of those players of the last 10 years, I think the only one he would tie with is Minka, for me. Um, and uh, I think he's better than Devontae Parker coming out of college. I don't even think that's close. Um, <clears throat> I think he's... This is one of the better picks we've had in a long time, and the Dolphins followed that up with another pick that I think is one of the best picks we've had. <laughs> like I just said, I just re- we just did all the first-round picks the last 10 years. This is my favorite first round of the last 10 years, and it's not even close. Um, I, you know, last year's first round was really good, um, but this first round, I, I just think, really puts the team over the top, and I think two of these two players are A-plus players, um, and are going to affect the team right away. I think these two, te- these two guys, ha- I mean, Waddle has the potential to win Offensive Player of the Year, and this next guy we're going to talk about, who the Dolphins got a steal with the 18th pick overall, and, I, and I've said this before, but one of my favorite players in this draft one of my top five players in this draft, and he's a pass rusher, uh, Jalen Phillips. I love, <laughs> I really, 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 really like him as a player. Um, one of my favorite picks this Dolphins team has had in a very long time. The best pass rusher, best outside, not even just a pass rusher, but he's great against the run. Sorry, guys, I'm a little burp. Stuffy nose, excuse me. <clears throat> but an A-plus pick. He reminds me, he's a, he, not only is he a, I can't even describe putting words how happy I am about this pick. He is a scheme fit. He can do, he can play a 4-3 front, a 3-4 front. He can set the edge in the run game at a very high level. Very smart player. Very athletic. And one of the things that, you know, when I go back and watch games from last year, The reason we struggle against the Bills so much, there's two huge reasons. One, we can't separate against man-to-man coverage every single time we play them. Every single time we play them. We have a very hard time of separating down the field. uh, And just separating in general every every single time we play them. The other thing that we struggle against when we play them is containing Josh Allen in the pocket. And having someone up front who can affect the passer. What did the Dolphins do in this draft? They added a special special, special edge player. And he's going to help us so much in that department. You know, in the Broncos game, in the Bills game, if we had Jalen Phillips who can make a play when we do drop back in coverage and we aren't sitting in the house with our amoeba blitzes and stuff like that, 
He can make plays by himself. And you marriage that with a great secondary, which the Dolphins improved on this offseason with the additions of Coleman and obviously Holland, who we're going to talk about later in this video. But just, uh, excuse me, Jalen Phillips. I don't know if I'm going to call him Justin Phillips. Sorry if I did. But he can make plays when we do play more coverage. He can help us in the run game. He makes the, the, I think, not only does he improve the defensive front, but he also helps us in the run game as well. He can help us in the run game as well. And no disrespect to Ogba, but he, like, again, if you rush four or even three, he's not going to win at a dominant level at that all the time. I think Van Ginkle is even better at him than that um, when you rush three or four. You know, Ogba is amazing when you get creative on the defensive front because he's such a great athlete. He's so big, he's so physical, so long that when you do some of those creative stunts and blitzes and stuff up front, that he can be a special player when it comes to that kind of stuff. But he's not necessarily going to be a dominant force when he has to, like, win on one-on-one. Like I said, if you rush four or three. Jalen Phillips is that. He is, you know, <clears throat> a TJ... Ooh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm burping all over the place right now. He is a TJ Watt type of player. He is a Miles Garrett type of player. He's a Von Miller type of player that can, can be a special player... When it comes to winning on the edge and getting you sack production, and it allows you to do more things and be more confident in those things in terms of defensive play calling. And like I said, we don't have to be so aggressive all the time <clears throat> to be, to make negative plays in the passing game. Um, <clears throat> and he can allow us. He definitely is going to alleviate a lot of pressure for uh, Josh Boyer and Brian Flores because, like I said, he has the ability to be dominant when you rush three or four, which is not... They didn't have a player like that. Van Giekel was the closest thing like they had to that. Uh, and Van Giekel's good at it, and I think he's going to continue to grow. But Phillips, I mean, his... His, um... His ability to do that is... Uh, could have potential to be, like, a pro bowler uh, in, a, in, a, in a special player for years to come on this team. The best edge player that, t in terms of talent, since we, we've had since, like, Cam Wake... Obviously, JT, OV, like he has, he could be just as good as those guys. Um, and um, one of my favorite picks in this draft. And like I said, he's very good in the run game too. And, you know, people, obviously I was worried about, you know, Kyle Van Noy leaving and what are we going to do? <clears throat> and I loved the moves that the Dolphins had after that with McKinney. This defensive front and the defense in general is significantly better than it was a year ago. Uh, and like I said, the two things that they fixed in my opinion, that were needs on this team was playmaking on the offensive side of the football and adding someone on the edge who can who can be a difference maker. Um, and go if you guys go listen to the Bills, my Bills reaction, I'm sure you guys don't want to listen to that. I wouldn't want to listen to that and relive that either. But I've gone back to the game multiple times and both Bills games just to see like, okay, what what is the team missing? What? And again, like that's the thing I come back to do come back to is a dominant player who when we do drop back in, in, in coverage can affect the quarterback and we got that in Jalen Phillips and he can be a special player um not just you know a good player a special player which I think 1000% he will be and then obviously Waddle who and we already talked about Waddle but who can make a difference in so many different ways uh I could talk about Phillips for a long time I and I know some people might be worried about the concussions and stuff like that, but some of those were freak injuries. Uh, I think his wrist injury um, was due to a an accident with a car, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so a lot, some of these weren't even football related, um, and I don't expect him to. Uh, and another thing he brings to the team. Let me finish my point on the injuries. I'm not really worried about those. <clears throat> not really. I'm not worried about them all actually. But I think when you look at the, the the additions this team made, our run defense is going to be significantly better this year. Our pass rush is going to be significantly better with the additions of Adam Butler, Phillips, um, and um, <clears throat> McKinney, who's a very good pass rusher. Um, our blitz packages, the athleticism, our speed up front is better than it was last year. Um, the our, I mean, they literally improved the defense, which was... Uh, obviously, for the majority of the year, a top five, if not number one, scoring defense and one of the best third-down defense statistically last year in all of football, and they improved on that without someone like Jalen Phillips on the front seven. So, 
God, man. I haven't been this excited and happy. This is, like, I haven't been this happy about a draft in a long time. Um, and then, not only just the first round pick, but as a whole. Like, this, this, this draft gets me excited, and I think this draft is a huge payoff um, to uh, what the Dolphins did with accumulating assets. Like, this is the payoff. You know what I mean? This is the this is like oh this is where this, this these guys can get this team over the hump, uh, and especially with the additions of Waddle and Phillips, it it it, it helps us fill needs that we had, um, and teams can't play us the same way that they have been because of these two players. Uh, you know, it really makes our team better and more dangerous, uh, and that's what the that's what the whole offseason is about, and that's what this 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 uh, front office did. So, in, in closing, this first round was amazing. My favorite first round. Uh, and when I say my favorite, this is my favorite first round since I've been doing videos, since I've, um, uh, by far my favorite first round of the last 10 years. Um, in terms of, like, reaction after the draft is over, um, is, is by far the best feeling I've had about a, a first round and a draft um, since, I, like, like I said, especially the last 10 years. So let's go into the second round now, where the Dolphins selected with their first pick, Javon Holland. <sighs> so I think, first of all, the future is bright on the back end of the Dolphins secondary. When you have Brandon Jones, who's an, an up, and, 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 like, ooh, God, I can't speak, an up-becoming superstar, um, and I should say star, maybe not superstar, but I really like Brandon Jones, uh, and Holland, who... Honestly, sorry, I'm going to sneeze here. I might sneeze here. Oh, Lord. My nose is trying to prevent me from doing this video. Um, Holland, who... And you had obviously Holland to the back end, so the future is bright uh, when it comes to... This guy is super talented, can play nickel, which is going to be really interesting where he fits in the secondary and how he's used. I think he's just going to be a chess player his first year. But in the future, I think he's either going to be... I think, he honestly, he's going to be Eric Rowe in his future. I know a lot of people think he's going to replace Bobby. And, you know, one of the pros of him is he's a great communicator. Uh, but I honestly think Brandon Jones is a better free safety. Um, and we'll see where this goes. But, again, this guy is a... A, a Brian Flores guy, a great scheme fit. When you play safety in this this offense, or defense, excuse me, you have to be able to match up one on one in man coverage with people because of our blitz packages. You have to be able to do that. And obviously, the thing that Holland does the best is do that. He is a guy who can match up with tight ends and slot receivers uh, and be dominant. He's great against the run game. The one thing is weird about him. First of all, he's a great athlete, but he's so active up front in the front seven and, and getting TFLs. He's not just a really good ball hawk. He can affect the run game as well. And that's why I think, I mean, his best when he's playing nickel and he's up on the line of scrimmage, he's defending tight ends and stuff like that. That's the best thing he does. Uh, so that's why I think he's more of an Eric Rowe replacement, not necessarily someone who's going to replace Bobby. I think Brandon Jones, I think, fits that more. Um, but regardless of whatever Flores' plans are for the future, and I mean, they, they've literally been trying to replace Bobby for a long time. They tried to get Devin McCourty. Obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, and obviously, now they have Holland and Brandon Jones, who will eventually replace Rowe and um, uh, um, Bobby. Uh, not anytime soon. Obviously, this year, I think there's... I mean, Eric Rowe is still a really good player and is very good at what he does. But, um, th you know, these guys are the future, and I think... Again, not only are they scheme fits, but are very talented. And like I said, great great ball skills, really good in man coverage, which is what you have to be in this in this defense. Can affect the run, affect the run game. Athletic when he sees it, he, and he's a great open field tackler. He he goes and gets it because of he, because he's a good athlete. And and he, dude, there was a play. I think it was against um, maybe it was against Auburn. Um, who uh, he dominated in that game. But, um, or maybe it was against Wisconsin. I don't even know. I don't know why I want to say Wisconsin, but it was against like a, I think it was Wisconsin. Uh, it was against a fullback, um, and who outweighs him by a good amount. And instead of trying to go through this fullback, he uses his athleticism and just like a crossover in basketball and gets around him. Like he does that on a consistent basis. Like he's very, very good in the run game. 
So I, I really love this pick. A lot of this, a lot of people have this guy going in the first round. I I can see why watching him play. Um, very special. And um, like I said, I don't think I don't you know some people think he's going to be the replacement for Bobby. I think I think he will eventually be more of the strong safety in this defense. Um, just by the way he plays the game. I think Brandon Jones is a little bit more of a fit for to be the free safety, at least from what we've seen last year. And, and like I said, very the future is very bright. Again. The secondary is so good. I'm, I'm very, like I said, I'm very curious to see where he ends up playing because Coleman is on the roster, and the depth in the secondary is insane. Um, if someone gets hurt, it's <laughs> like... It's going to be just fine because obviously they have Igbenagi. I mean, there's the depth in the secondary is ridiculous. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see where Holland... I think he's going to affect special teams because of his returnability. But then again, you have Waddle and Grant too. And I wonder if the Dolphins are going to get rid of Grant to maybe free up some some cap space to maybe go get a vet. Uh, vet because they don't really need Grant anymore. They have Holland. They have Waddle who can affect the special teams unit. Um, they don't really need him anymore. I, I wonder if um, they end up going that route to maybe get a running back. Like Le'Veon Bell or someone like that. <clears throat> but again, I don't really see... I don't... Uh, I, I really don't... Man, it's going to be interesting to see what... I, th- I think he's definitely going to be involved in some of those blitz packages. Because he, I think he, on the next level, is going to be a fantastic blitzer because of his ability to um, be creative and... and when he, against the front seven when he in the front seven when he has to play up when when he has to when he uh, which is one of the things that he's really good at so I think he'll be effective in that I just I, it's gonna be interesting like I said to see where all these guys are gonna fit um, and again he makes the defense significantly faster he makes the run defense better um, and uh, he obviously our coverage oh sorry dropped something and our uh, coverage ability is improved greatly so this is another. To me, an A pick. I think you're. I think negative. If you're going to be a negative Nancy against this pick, um, you can say, well, not really a need. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't, but to be honest with you, it is a need. Uh, you know, Bobby got hurt a few times last year, um, and he hasn't been. In, I mean, he had his best season last year. Not to take anything away from Bobby, but um, you know, Bobby's had his bad moments too. So. And Holland has way more upside than Bobby McCain ever had. He's a bigger player. He's more athletic. His coverage ability coming out of college is way better than Bobby's was. Obviously, Bobby was a corner coming out of college. His ability to play in the front seven and be an open field tackler is significantly better than what Bobby has ever been able to do, and, to, and especially for his upside. Um, so, I, you know, I but you know, if if he can communicate the defense and get everybody set right. And maybe again, I think they maybe they shift that to Brandon a little bit more. But if that is the the vision for him, if he can get that right his rookie season, which I doubt Brian is going to trust someone like him to do his rookie year, then maybe you see some of that. But I, I think eventually he'll he'll be the either uh, the strong safety or the the free safety of the future for the team. And one more thing I want to say about Holland. You know, Brian is really building his defense in what p- the players that he likes. A lot of these players had some carryover from, obviously, the Adam Gase era, and Bobby McCain is one of those. And um, he is definitely working towards, like, okay, these are guys, these guys are going to— and, and I imagine in year two, you're going to have Roe, Holland, and um, Brandon be your guys. I don't think Bobby McCain will be a Dolphin after this season, especially after this pick. And again, he's a more natural safety, and he's a more natural fit for what— Brian wants in a safety than Bobby McCain is and he's bigger he's more physical he's just as good in coverage like in terms of his potential and especially what he showed in college so again I think he's just a more natural fit for that position as well so let's move on to uh to um the second pick in the second round which the Dolphins ended up trading up to to do to get um and again I think this is going to make a lot of Dolphins fans happy uh Liam Eichenberg out of out of Notre Dame, I don't know if this is a real stat. Not only does this man have, I think, 36 starts in a row, so he's very dur- durable, but uh, he hasn't given up a sack in two years. I, I, I read this. I hope this stat is real because um, uh, it doesn't seem real, but that is a ridiculous ridiculous stat. A lot of people have... First of all, let me, let me just give you my thoughts about the pick. I love the pick. I think... Um, you know, not only is he a Notre Dame lineman where they run the football a lot and they run a pro-style run game, 
uh, he's physical. He's a big dude, which a lot of people knock him for. But to me, I mean, from watching him play, I'm like, I don't really see why <laughs> he's not small. Um, uh, can be versatile, obviously play guard or tackle. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they... I love the pick. Um, you know, I, and I think the Dolphins are definitely... They weren't necessarily thrilled with maybe some of the stuff that they got last year, out of, especially in the run game from their offensive linemen. I know a lot of fans were, even though it got better towards the end of the season. Um, this is one of the picks, though, that I could say, oh, you know, maybe we could have gotten a center here, uh, maybe the center out of Oklahoma. I think Landon Dickerson at this point had already been drafted. Um, and um, you, maybe you could make an argument for a center here. I think they really like Michael Dieter, though. Uh, but I really like the player, Liam Eikenberg. I think, to me, I, like when I was watching him play, I watched him play against Clemson and a couple other teams, I was like, well, I, I don't really see any... Uh, Clemson has a, a really good front. I, to me, I'm like, a lot of people think he's not big enough, maybe he's not a good enough athlete to play tackle on the next level. When I watch him play, I'm like, why not? He, He's natural at it. I think his, you know, when the when he... <clears throat> when he when the ball is snapped, he gets back quick. Like I think that's one of the things. I was like, man, he does have. To me, he has quick feet, and I know that some of those some of those you know uh, those are some of the negative things about him. But when I watch him, I don't see it. Um, I think to for I honest to God, I think he would be a good right tackle in the NFL, and I know that's what he's projected to be. I think he can. He'll be just fine. I know that's to his blind side, but uh, you know I saw people like Omar Kelly thinking Kenley is going to play tackle, and um. And maybe that does end up happening. Uh, and then you maybe you move Hunt and Eichenberg inside, maybe Deidre at center. But to me, I, I, I would try Eichenberg at tackle. And uh, he's had a lot of starts in college, so he's not going to be green by, you know, wet behind the ears and get in there and have deer in the headlights and not be able to do it. And he's not going to need a ton of development. You can play him at right tackle, and I think he'll be just fine. Uh, but um, I think you move Hunt and inside, maybe you... You leave Jesse Davis in there, or well Kinley. So I think you maybe you get Hunt and Kinley inside and have Dieter at center, and maybe if Skura can stay healthy, I would at least try Dieter at center. But this pick with Eichenberg, like I said, I think he's a more natural tackle. I think he's a more natural tackler than Rob, tackle than Robert Hunt coming out of college. I always thought Hunt was more of a guard, and Hunt didn't play bad at tackle. But I think Hunt is his best is being physical and getting after in the run game. That's where he's at at his best. So I think you move Hunt inside and put Eichenberg on the outside. I think he can play tackle in the NFL at a high level. I think he could be a, a service. I think his probably his floor to me is a good starter in the league. I don't think he'll ever be a bad starter, um, and I think his ceiling is someone who can be maybe a Pro Bowler one day. In my opinion, I know people probably don't share that opinion, um, but from what I've seen, he he looks fine. Um, big dude, good in the run game. Uh, and I don't agree with some of the things that people have said about him. Maybe like maybe not the most athletic guy. Um, I don't agree with that. I think he's just. I think he has good, uh, more than enough potential to play right tackle in the league. So let's move on. We'll see where he goes. And I think Brian, you know, from all the off seasons that we've had so far within the last two years, he's he tries everybody at every position, especially on the offensive line. So Eichenberg will have every opportunity to, to at least play tackle. Um, <clears throat> now, um, so the Dolphins really didn't have a long, uh, day three, and we're going to get into that here because they didn't have a fourth or fifth round pick. So let's get into round three. And one thing I will say about Eichenberg, I would say out of all of the picks, he was the one guy that I, first of all, he's a good player. Uh, and you know, it's like, I can't hate on the pick because he's a good player. So I did not... But I think he's probably the one that I could see Dolphins fans. I don't know though, because everybody wants a tackle. I mean, if you if you wanted a tackle, you got one, um, in a very deep tackle draft. And, and I think he can play right tackle. Um, so I don't really know. I don't know. I was trying to find negatives about this. I guess, like I said, maybe you could advocate for maybe. Hey, we probably should pick the center here. Maybe I don't know. I think it was a little bit too high for Michael Carter. Um, Javante Williams was already gone at this point, so I, I, you know, I really, I think he was gone at this point at at, uh, at at 42. I wouldn't have picked Williams over Eichenberg or Holland. Like I said, I wasn't necessarily the biggest Williams fan. I, I wouldn't have picked him if I was like, who would you rather have? I would have rather had Highland and Eichenberg, Holland and Eichenberg, excuse me. 
So let's move on to to, to the, the. I'm listen. I'm tr- I'm not gonna be neg. It's hard to be negative about these picks, guys. It really is. Like it. I I'm. I don't want to sound like I'm not critical of some of these picks. But to be honest with you, the only criticism you can have is maybe you think you. Like the, the thing with Eichelberg is is or even Holland is maybe you go in a different positional direction. But them as players, they're good players. I mean, Holland was projected to go in the first round. If you're into those projections and stuff, the Dolphins get him in the second round. And Eichenberg uh, is one of the better tackles in the draft. So, I, I I mean, I'm I don't know where you can and who obviously has versatility to play guard. I just don't I don't know where you could get the negatives there. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, so let's move on. To probably my third favorite pick in the draft. Maybe not over Holland. Honestly, though, um, I think this guy can affect the field right away. Like, Holland is a... He, I think he can start, and I think he has a place in this league, or a place in this in, in this system. I just don't know if he's going to be at out some of those guys that are ahead of him day one. Um, so, But I think he's got a really bright future. Um, this guy, I think, can affect the field right away and get on the field right away and be, uh, be an asset and someone who can... Um, give us really good production his first season. And uh, so, again, this is the end of Dolphins in day two. They go tight end from Boston College, Hunter Long. Now, some of the criticisms I heard about Hunter Long when I was watching draft, obviously draft um, analysts when we picked him, maybe not the greatest athlete, maybe can't affect the passing game uh, on the next level, but obviously he's a very good run blocker. I disagree with that. He really reminds me of Jason Winton. He really, really does. He, re- he reminds me a lot of Jason Winton, actually. Uh, very similar games. Not g- a great athlete, but he makes up for his uh, athleticism with really, really good route running and really, really a great ability to use his body um, against smaller defenders. This is a big dude, physical dude. So I think he can affect the passing game in the NFL, at a pretty good level. Like I said, he reminds me a lot of Jason Winton. The way that Jason was never a good athlete, but always was able to get it. And again, this is something Hunter did. He led the the uh, college football in receptions over Kyle Pitts. And that's something Jason Winton did constantly. I mean, he was just really, really good at catching the football. And same thing here. I mean, I think the best thing about Hunter Long's game is probably his hands. And he's a very good route runner. So I, And a great run blocker as well. Uh, so you match him up with Kasiki, I mean, that could be a very good uh, tandem for a long, long time. And I think he could be a really nice red zone threat as well. But um, I'm really excited about this pick because I think he can affect the field his rookie season. And to get someone like that in the third round is is pretty awesome. Uh, he can help the run game out. He can help the passing game out. He can help two out, two out as well. He gets, like I said, he's a very good route runner in the quick passing game. I think he can be a nice security blanket for Tua. Um, and... Um, uh, and be effective on third downs and red zone. And I think, he can, like I said, affect, affect um, uh, be, a, be a starter next to Gesicki right away, I think, I, to me. And like I said, I, I, I completely disagree with the criticism of him not being um, an effective pass catcher on the next level. I think he can absolutely do that. You don't have to be a great athlete. Like we've seen with these tight ends, like Evan Ingram, Ian Thomas, um, some of these tight ends that run fast 40s haven't really panned out on the next level. You don't have to... It's not all about speed at the tight end position. This guy is an old school receiving tight end. Um, and again, like I said, I think he reminds me a lot of Jason Wynn. And I think this is a guy that you will see start and have production his first year in the league. And be a fan favorite too. Um, <clears throat> so I, one of my favorite picks in the draft, I love Hunter Long. Let's move on from him to Larnell Coleman. Who, this is day three of the draft. The Dolphins only pick in the seventh round on day three. Um, <clears throat> uh, Larnell Coleman out of Massachusetts. Uh, another offensive player that the Dolphins add. We'll see what he can do. I don't necessarily see him. It's going to be tough for him to make the team. Um, he's got a lot of guys in front of him. We'll see what the Dolphins end up doing with him. I don't have a ton of ton of say about. I don't have a ton of uh, things to say about Coleman. Um, he's gonna have a long road ahead of him, uh, and uh, we'll see with him. Hopefully, at the very least, he can add some depth here. I mean, DJ Fluker. I mean, it's gonna be very hard for him to make this team um, with some of the guys in front of him. Jesse Davis. It's 
So not much to say about Arnold Coleman, uh, unfor- not to, not unfortunately, but just um, just um, yeah, I just could be really tough for him to make the team. Uh, and then we go to Garrett Dokes or Jared Garrett, I think is how you use his name. Dokes, running back out of Cincinnati. Um, so obviously, I don't think this guy. First of all, I don't really like this dude's game. I know Chris Greer and Brian Flores said a lot about his pass pass protection skills, but other than that, I really don't see. He's a physical player. But I don't necessarily think he can be a great power back on the next level. He doesn't have blazing speed. Um, he's more of a balanced running back, kind of like a Carlos Hyde, a little bit kind of not as maybe as physical as Carlos was coming out of college. Um, but uh, I don't really expect much from him. And I don't. I, I still think the Dolphins need to go out and get maybe a veteran guy. Uh, like I said, maybe you move some people around, like Jakeem Grant or some of the other receivers on this team can, can be let go, maybe save some money that way. Um, uh, you know, I I just don't really see it with this guy. I was trying to come up with comparisons. I really could never come up with any comparisons for him. Like I said, he's not a home run hitter. He's more of a... He's Jonathan Stewart type of player who doesn't have maybe the physical attributes those guys had um it's it's hard to kind of come up with a comparison for him i don't think he's gonna play over akhmet or gaskin and i really don't think he adds anything to the team that those guys don't already have me like it's hard i just don't really see much from this pick um i don't really see him really affecting the team all that much and maybe i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong um because we need obviously another running back in there who could be a difference maker. Uh, and Gaskin, I think, you know, who missed a lot of time last year uh, in critical moments, and um, people forget about that. He's And Gaskin is a smaller player, uh, and the Dolphins needed a bigger running back in that room. And uh, Do- or excuse me, Garrett, I don't necessarily think, obviously they got Malcolm Brown from the Rams. I, it's going to be hard for him to make the team, and he reminds me a little bit of Malcolm Brown, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, I don't really see where this guy can really, maybe on special teams, I think it's his best bet, um, but I don't see him doing anything really uh, for this team. Uh, uh, it's going to be hard for him to, to make the team and make the roster. So this pick, uh, I mean, this is a seventh round pick, but um, I just, I don't know. I mean, you know, Ahmed and Gaskin, nobody ever think thought that they would, even though I liked Gaskin when he came out. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see with him. Hopefully he can, uh, he can, uh, he's a, he's a, he is definitely a more physical runner though. I will say that. Um, but, um, he, I don't know if he can, I don't think he'll be a great power back necessarily on the next level. We'll see. We'll see with him. But that really wraps up the draft. And to be honest with you, in closing with this draft, this is an A+. plus. This is the best draft this Dolphins team has had in 10-plus years. And it's not even a debate. If you look at the first four picks in this draft, all four of them are going to play on this team and start at some point and give it be good players. Hunter Long, I think, is going to start year one and give us good production. Liam going to play year one uh, and help us in the run game for sure. Makes the offensive line bigger, more physical. Could play right tackle, I think, on the next level and be productive. Holland, who is a super freak athletically and can really fill a need at the safety position in the near future and be a very good starter for a long time and a great fit in the system. Phillips can be a superstar, first-team all-pro type of player, and the Dolphins got the best pass rusher slash edge defender in the NFL draft. And I don't care. And the whole concussions thing, I am not worried about with him. And then Waddle, who adds an explosiveness, uh, can help us significant. Who could be a superstar slot receiver, like a superstar slot receiver for many years to come. And one of the things that people will forget about him, and I really want to get this point across, is he's a pure receiver. The dude was born to play receiver. This isn't a guy who's a gadget guy like Ted Ginn or. Who, John Ross, who I think he's a way more... He's not one-dimensional. He is not a one-dimensional player. He's good in the... It, 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 oh, God, I can't say it. Intermediate, quick passing game. He's good in every outside, inside. 
20 yards down the field, 30, 30 yards uh, in the middle of the field, anywhere in the middle of the field, anywhere on the outside of the field. He's a pure receiver who, who has special, special physical traits and could be an amazing player for years to come. Like, and, I, and again, great hands, by the way. Fantastic hands, and and can score with the football with more in more ways than one. Not only can he beat you down the field, uh, straight line speed or on a post with his route running, he's very quick coming in and out of his breaks, and that's something that this team desperately needed because he's the only. Honestly, in terms of route running and someone who can get separation on a consistent ba- basis, he is the best on the roster right now, um, and it's not even really that close. And you know, obviously, Will Fuller, I think he's going to miss the first two games of the season, but when he comes back. The speed on the offense is greatly improved from where it was a year ago. And Brian Flores made a great point with Waddle is he's going to help us in the run game. you know. And something that Akeem Tlaib t- said that um, I thought was interesting, he said he had Eric, obviously Studsville, who's the run game coordinator for Miami, and he said he's going to run a McVay running scheme with us. And I thought that was really interesting. And uh, if that is the case, then he is perfect for that Robert Woods role where he is going to motion in the backfield and could take a handoff and really add some, for some mix, misdirection in the backfield. Um, so he's a great fit for that system as well, and could be a dominant slot receiver, for, for like I said, for a long time. That's something that the team needed. And like I said, he's a pure receiver. Some people might watch his game and think, oh, he's just a deep... No, he's not just a deep threat. He's not Ted Ginn. He is a pure all-around receiver uh, and is going to be a very good player for years to come. And like I said, I think the best thing... his Everything about his game, route running hands, um, just being a receiver... like. I think is an underrated part of his game. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about. This. I mean, this draft was amazing. I, I mean, there was no negatives at all. Like none of these players are reaches at all. There's no Chris Harris in this draft, or it's not Chris Harris, Charles Harris, excuse me. There, there was no you know pick where I'm like, even when we picked Juwan James, who was obviously a head scratcher at the time, the, we filled needs and we filled them with, with talented players. Um, that I absolutely, I mean, Jalen Phillips is by, like, if I had to rank the picks, uh, Phillips is my favorite. I think, I mean, Waddle is a, I might as well be tied for my favorite. And then I think Hunter Long and then Holland and Liam. I mean, all of them are great pit. I mean, good Lord, dude. I, Chris did a fantastic job. A fan, this is his best draft by far since he's been a, a GM of the team. And I'm glad he capitalized on it. And if, especially following up the season with a 10 win record to get this kind of a draft, uh, is is amazing. This defense is going to be locked down. They fixed all the needs on the defense, uh, and and they somehow did it with giving up their one of their best edge players in Van Noy, and somehow they were able to turn that around and get player, excuse me, way better players at those positions, and and, and improve the offensive line, which a lot of people were pounding the table for, with Eichenberg. Um, and uh, in the secondary as well, especially with you know Bobby, better not mess up. That's all I got to say. And if this kid can commu- can can learn the NFL game at a, at, at a high level and a quick, and I th- like I said, I think maybe Brandon Jones might be that guy. And I think to be honest with you, he could be a plug and play strong safety right away. If Brandon takes over the free safety job because he has a year under his belt and can do that, uh, then uh, I think Holland will see a lot of playing time. And maybe he does beat out everybody to play the nickel corner position. And if someone goes down and he has to play. He could play at a very, very high level. So, um, again, this draft was amazing. And um, I think all Dolphins fans should really, um, really, I mean, honestly, dude, this is, like I said, to fall, to, to, to have this kind of a draft and this kind of an offseason after a 10-win season um, and be this aggressive is, uh, is pretty awesome. So... Sorry, guys. Oof, it's not going everywhere. Yeah, so this gets an A+. I think this is the first A+, I've ever given for a draft. I think last year, I think I maybe did a B or something like that. Something like that. It was something around there. But th- to me, this is an A+. <clears throat> so let's let's um, let's um move on to the fan Q&A, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what you guys had to say about the draft. I, I, I would love to have someone, like, if, if I could have multiple people on this show, I would love to just see, like, just to, to have an, a conversation about what maybe they find. And, again, I think all the negatives that people could even come up with is, like, oh, we should have drafted a running back. First of all, look at the players we did get. Just because we didn't get a running back, but look at the players we did get. Every single one of them. Like I said, the, the first four picks, all are going to play at some point and be good players. 
And again, the first two are going to be special players. These guys are going to be special, special players. And I think Hunter Long has a, has a has a good opportunity to be a pretty good player on the next level as well. I think his his floor is Anthony Vassano. His ceiling is to me is Jason Winton. Okay, so let's 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 look, let's get into the fan Q and A. Uh, let's see if I can't. Sorry, guys. I'm looking for quite. I'm looking for questions here. Okay, this comes from uh, Dumper. He says, bruh, what are we doing? We could have gotten anyone else. This reminds me of the Browns drafting in 2014. 2014 was one of the best drafts, too. What do you think? I really hope I'm wrong. Well, I think you're completely wrong. I need you to... I, I really can't... I don't know what your criticisms are of this, this these picks. This, uh, let's see... This question comes from SM. He says, Skag, Cincinnati's not picking up the fifth year option of center Billy Price. Why not offer him a, offer them a late round pick or one of our fifteen receivers for a twenty six year old center? Uh eh, I don't know about that one. I think Skur is probably he's a better player if he can stay healthy. And Dieter too. I would rather have Dieter. Um this question comes from Beef. He says, Hey, Skaggs, what do you think of us drafting a running back in the seventh round? We drafted Malcolm Perry in the seventh round as well, but do you think uh, Dokes is a good, speedy running back? I don't know if... I don't know. When I watched him play, I, I don't know if he's a speedy running back, but, um, you know, he's a bigger back. I don't know. It's, it's going to be hard for him to make the team. There's a lot of guys in front of him. And honestly, I think, like I said before, I would rather us go out and maybe seek a veteran player. And again, I think the only criticism of this draft, I, th- I just maybe thought, maybe a legitimate one, is maybe not had not having as many picks on day three. Uh, but, I mean, the, f- the four players that they did get are really good. SM uh, says, what is Cincinnati going to do? Most drafts have been... Okay, wait, let's see again. Let's see. Um... Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. There's some of these picks. I did open the fake like a few, like a, I think a day before the draft. And a lot of these picks were like, what are we going to do? We already know what we did. Okay, this question comes from SM. He says, my favorite night of the year is... Okay, see, again, this is before the draft. This question goes for Jack Pack. He says, I mentioned previously that I thought Eric Flowers was garbage and not worth a $9 million a year. And it looks like the front office agrees. Not sure why they gave him a deal to begin with. Even with saving of trading him, they still don't have enough cap space to sign their rookie class. So what do you think is going, who's going to get cut or restructured? I would say we do now. We do have enough to sign the rookie class. But I would say Hearns, Wilson, Grant are all candidates to be moved on from. Um, this question comes from the Apollo. He says, in the draft, we probably... We'll probably not get one of our needs in the first two rounds, which are an O-line and an offensive receiving weapon, running back, defensive end, center, considering that the talent, what talent is available. Well, we did. We we did we did redress defensive end and receiver in the first round. Again, some of these picks are before the draft. Uh, this question comes from Jack Pack. He says, I don't understand why they refuse to address the need for a power back. They had plenty of chances on day two. I get that you can find backs literally anywhere in the draft or in free agency, but how do they justify taking a tight end at 81? They have five tight ends now. Because I think he's a talented player, and I think he will affect the the team. He's not just a good run blocker, but he's also... And again, if they're going to run this uh, uh, Sean McVay run Kyle Shannon Shannon slash Sean McVay running game, you need two tight ends that can not only block, and Gesicki can't do that necessarily, but can... To can actually affect the passing game, and that's I think he's more of a scheme fit now. Plus, obviously, Gesicki's um and contract is, and we'll see how good Hunter Long is his rookie season. He has, like I said, the potential to be really good. So we'll see. I I disagree with that. Again, the running backs that were there, uh, when we picked him, I mean, I don't know. I would rather I th- I don't know. I, I I would rather have him over them, in my opinion. I I was not. I didn't love the running backs in this draft. 
all that much. <laughs> this question goes to best. He says, why does Mike Tannenbaum have a job on e I don't know. On ESPN. I have no idea. Anybody listening to that man is actually insane. This question comes from the Apollo. He says, we traded Flowers, cut Van Noy, uh, cut Howard, didn't re-sign Matt Breida. Furthermore, Albert Wilson, Mike Gesicki, Will Fuller, o Ogba, Jerome Baker, Durham Smythe, Preston Williams, plus many other backups are out of contract after the season. Alan Hearns, to my surprise, is under contract uh, in 2022. This means surely in the in the 2022 offseason of Miami will have plenty of cash space in 2022 to, find, to sign for free agents. Therefore, do you have confidence in the current front office to deliver in that offseason in 2022, considering only Byron Jones was a success last season from the free agent pile of 2020 that is still under contract after this season? Well, I will say this. I mean, Lawson and uh, Van Noy were good players for us, and uh, in my opinion. So I disagree with that. I mean, they were they were good starters in the league. They, I, I think they were they weren't bad for agent signings by any stretch of the imagination. And two, obviously next year to look. First of all, I think the team now is much better than it was a year ago. This is Brian Flores' best team by far. And uh, if the rumors are true that we're gonna have more of a New England pass game and a more Sean McVay running game, that's gonna be awesome to watch with with the offensive players that we have. So I think the team is really good this year with a lot of young talent on it from some of these drafts that are really the pillars of this um, uh, of this team. So I think a lot of the things that you're going to see in 2022 is re-signing some of those guys. Um, like uh, Baker, maybe Mike Gesicki, uh, maybe you keep Durham Smythe. Um, I think a lot of the things that you're going to see in 2022 is retaining some of those guys. Restructuring X to make him a little bit more happy. This next question comes from Beef. He says, Hey, Skag, just want to know your opinion. Were there any draft picks that made you happy? And are there any missed picks that you are upset by? No, none of the. I'm not upset about any of these picks. I mean, Devontae Smith is. Miss, not drafting him was a little. I was a little like, oh, man, we could have had. But again, if Waddle is a great player, if we if we went with like um, I don't know who we could have drafted there, that would have really made me upset. I don't think anybody we could have picked there. Maybe like Rashawn Slater, if we picked him, I would have probably uh, flown to, to Mars and never returned. But um, Waddle is a great player, so I, I there, there was no picks that I was mad at. I mean, I love Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips is my favorite pick, probably since Minka. And same thing with Jalen Waddle. I mean, I, I really love Jalen Phillips and Jalen Waddle. So. So, SM says, Skag, did you give up your entire 21, 2021 draft uh, plus Tua for Aaron Rodgers? Probably not. Ak, this comes from Ahmed. He says, why the players with the injury history? Why, uh, injury history. Uh, Phillips, I'm not concerned about, and neither I am with Waddle either. I, 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 I mean, first of all, Waddle, I mean, he had one injury in college. Um, and... Um, there have been plenty of players like that. I don't think you're going to be super concerned with that. And uh, Phillips, I mean, Eichenberg and Holland are, don't have those issues. But um, Phillips, I'm not concerned about it at all. Those are, you know, we for years have passed on people for, oh, maybe they aren't the injury history or like Tyron Matthews, another one that comes to mind because he's obviously had the weed issue. The two players, how about, let me, let, me, let me put it this way, Ahmed. We drafted two super talented players. So... To counter the the injury thing. We're definitely going to do a separate video on the fan Q&A. Because I, I, I'm sorry I was quiet <laughs> for a lot. Because was, I was trying to get through these questions. But I think we're going to have to do another video with Q&A. Because um, most of these questions were... Um, before the draft related, I don't know. I, mean, I should have uploaded the the the, the Q and A video on on, on the, that's my fault. Uh, I'm sorry for the some of these long pauses at the end here, but uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed my favorite draft f and since I've been doing this, and uh, very excited for the season. I cannot wait to watch the season now. I mean, not that I couldn't before, but the team is way better than it was a year ago. And uh, uh, and let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.